So, brethren, uh, can I ask you to rise for the moment of silent prayer? Brethren, we will praise the Lord and open this uh, worship hour with a hymn number 95. Praise Him, praise Him. together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is the word of God and we shall all kneel down and open in prayer. Gracious and loving Father in heaven, in the name of our blessed Savior and thy Son Jesus Christ, we come to your throne of grace and we thank you, Father, that you brought us here safely and that you are, have been with us in the past days of our lives, that you have cared for us, Lord, and that you have had that you have had us in your mind even before we were born, even before this world was created. Father, you gave your Son. You gave him to us forever to become, become a part of human family. 
And Father, as we are assembled here to contemplate what is your original plan for human family and how we should live today, Lord. Help us, Lord, in a special way that we may be filled with the Holy Spirit, especially be with the speaker for this hour, the Radu, to guide him, Lord, his thoughts and his words, and prepare the hearts, Lord, soften the hearts of young and old assembled here, that we may understand your word, and that thy word may find a place in our hearts and bring a rich root. O oh Lord, help us that we may really experience heaven here on earth, that we may know the blessed joy and peace and harmony that only thy love can bring to our lives and hearts. Lord, be with those who are tried, those who are sick, those who are discouraged, those who are in the body of decision laws, those who are struggling with different things in their lives. We thank you for many brethren who are assembled here, who have come from near and far, Lord. Bless us in this hour of worship. Bless our families, our youth, and our children, and our parents as well, Lord. And forgive us our sins and shortcomings, and bless the people around the world. We pray and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You know, children, the young people, when you left this room for the youth class, we first realized how many of you are here. And we are happy for that. We are happy that our conference has been blessed with so many youth and children. And they are the gift from the Lord. And we are happy for you that you have come here. Now, before you sing to us, children, I'd like to once again greet the brethren who have traveled long distances. We have here visitors to Canada from Romania, and we welcome you. We have brethren from Jamaica visiting with us, and we welcome you too. Thank you for coming and joining us. We have brethren from Montreal, from Ottawa, from Fustinch, from Toronto, and uh, welcome to all. Uh, I uh, mentioned this morning for the Sabbath school when we were opening that I'm very grateful for this opportunity. We've been here for so many years and uh, every time we come here we find a special peace. As we were coming uh, yesterday down the road and just about to turn to the driveway, Alex was uh, in a jubilant, shalom, oh, we are here, wow. And I know there are different reasons why you're happy. I mean, you are you're happy to see your friends and, and, and to, uh, you know, have a good time together. But we are happy in a special way that we are in nature, beautiful nature in God's presence. That we have this wonderful peace and that we can reflect on family life. At this time, uh, we will, I'll just mention, we have a lunch at uh, immediately following this service. And then we will have also a break after the lunch. But we will be gathered, gathered together at 3.45 for the song service, which will be led by Alexia Poznich. And at 4 o'clock, there will be an afternoon youth meeting uh, that Brother George will lead out in that meeting. So if you have any special items, speak to Brother George. But I know there will be a beautiful program for the afternoon as well. OK, at this time, well, let's invite the children, and they will sing. And you, and you.
Thank you so much. This is our song. Well, what you sang, let this be fulfilled in the way for that. Let me introduce the speaker for the hour. Brother Rad Units, a general conference a leader of the youth department. The first time that the Rad and I met, we were thinking yesterday, probably was in 1991 when when communism just collapsed in Romania, and Romania did it, many of them visit in Yugoslavia. I believe we started as well, yeah, most likely. So we met um, several of the Romanian brethren, and then we were traveling to Romania. My brother and I remember distinctly in 1990s I was going to Romania, and we were visiting Brother Radu. We were not married at that time, and many of you young people, children, were not even born. And brother was in Constanza as a worker there, and it was evangelistic meeting in the Black Sea, a beautiful place. And brother Joe, uh, brother um, uh, Radu was our host. It was a wonderful time. I still remember that. And we had time to talk about many things about life, about uh, faith. And uh, from that time, our friendship continued. Now, and now we have families, our children are already growing bigger, and we still serve the Lord in different parts of the world. But the Radio is traveling extensively, he has been involved with the youth, the work of the youth ministry for many years. He just returned from South America, he was in Peru and Ecuador, and now he accepted our invitation. The George invited him, and uh, he came. I'm very grateful for that. And he will be a keynote speaker for this event. And he will today speak in the worship hour. His sermon is entitled The Taste of Heaven. The Taste of Heaven. Radu, please come forward. Speak out here. I'm very thankful to the Lord for this uh, opportunity. And I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. All the rest. I'm trying. Uh, taking with me, uh, I'm carrying with me many greetings from Peru and from Romania, my country. So if you are willing to accept them, thank you so much. The Lord loves you more than you think. And uh, maybe the children are understanding the best this uh, reality, but we have children as well, so we may understand something as well. I'm hating sometimes that we are growing. <laughs> quite big and we are becoming too heavy to be happy. Therefore, just inviting the Lord with us today, please pray in your hearts that this few minutes, I don't know how many, I hope not too many, so that you not become bored and uh, unhappy, to reflect a little bit in our minds and in our hearts about the miracle of marriage. I am still trying to understand what's about. Brother Walter already told us that some 25 years ago we were not married, so we managed somehow to get married in between. We are still trying to understand, brethren, so that's my testimony in the beginning. Uh, maybe some of you are already married for more time than I've been married. But I believe that all of us have to continue our investigation. What's that about? And because we want his plans and his knowledge and his understandings, I would ask you kindly, as we sit, to have a, another moment of prayer. Because simply, we cannot at all understand anything that's coming from God, except by his spirit and I'm trying to accept this reality sometimes my heart is rebelling that's not like that but that's it without God we are uh, totally uh, uh, in, a, in an absolute condition of not understanding anything about his plans and there are many arguments in the Bible we don't touch any argument at all we only just ask ourselves to have a moment of prayer thank you
may, may the Lord help us to reflect uh, a new few minutes about the proposal, about the plan, the design of the Creator with us. And it's interesting, two words in the, the verse Brother uh, Walter uh, read for us. Together, that's not alone, that's together, yeah? Together as a church, together as a redeemed people, all together as a family. It depends how we regard the term. That's many things included here. Together, to sit together, not to be in a rush. Look, I love you so much, but I'm gonna... That's not the way you want to transmit to your love, how much you love that person, yeah? To sit, to sit, yeah, to take your time in the heavenly places, in Christ. Okay, two months only for these three words of the Bible, but we don't have. We have only a few minutes for the whole issue. Brethren, a new, I don't claim that I understand. But I try to understand, I pray to the Lord. What means together? And we'll try today a little bit to see in the Bible how complicated it is for humans after the exit of the Eden Garden to be together anymore. And then the last part is in Christ Jesus. That means not when Christ will come, to be in heavenly places because he will take his redeemed ones to heaven to be in heaven to be in heavenly places now how in christ jesus and because he is in us we are in him where 1.4 years light distance from canada toward the uh, yeah, orion constellation i don't know at all but i want to be there with my wife and with my children and I know that you want the same that's the promise that's the taste we have to experience here on earth so Socrates some thousand years ago said by all means marry okay if you get a good wife you will become happy if you get a bad one you will become a philosopher <laughs> Thank the Lord that we are not Greeks, we are children of God. We are a kind of uh, spiritual Israel. We are not Jewish as well. We are spiritual Israel. So, that's the wrong thing here. Uh, we can apply both genders. So, men, husbands, please don't be so happy. So, it's about ourselves as well. It's not about our wives only. Yeah. And uh, wives, you have not to become philosophers. You have to become happy. <laughs> to become like heaven on earth. And we want the same thing for you and for us. <coughs> because this was the design of God. God created us in his own image, in the image of an infinite God, which was a plural God. Yeah, Elohim, I don't know any. Hebrew, but Elohim means at least two persons. It's the plural. In, instead of Eloah, which is singular. All Bible is about Elohim. When the Bible says God said, that's Elohim, and should be like this. Let's create a man in our, and that previous 26, it says, let's do a creation yeah, of man in our image. That's plural. All the Bible should sound like that except 36 places in the Bible. That, yeah, ten thousands of times when you read God in, in the Bible, it's about the plural. And that's amazing. And that was the design, therefore, he created that male and female. We don't speak here about genders of God, because we are not so yeah, narrow-minded. But his replica, yeah, in his image, he said, he invented this possibility. Later on, we find out that it was not good that uh, Adam be alone. Yeah, it likes, it's not like a findings, later findings. Oh, I created something, it's not very good. No, 
intentionally Adam was created with this peculiarity to be complete only in the togetherness with a person for whom he can care for uh, whom, whom he has supposed to, to love by all means of his heart and by that to become closer and closer with the mind and with the heart of God there was the design Bible commentaries about this verse it says something more or less like this it was something amazing for God himself when he created the human mind and so on and then it says so that any faculty of the human mind should be a faculty of the divine mind it's fantastic and because God is social and he is happy in the presence of his beloved children created in many ways we don't know about angels about other planets we don't yeah we don't know many things but he is in the middle of that extraordinary family that he built and he's happy only like that and then he made Adam in the beginning only Adam to let him discover that's not good to be alone and then he made for him Eve and then his plan that was fantastic yeah so that we they will grow in what in happiness in righteousness and in knowledge of God and knowing God is not only talking with God contemplating his beautiful character in millions of aspects eternity will be too short to understand everything about God but to be married and in that way to understand in a different uh, let's say dimension what God means for you and how he feels and how he lives toward you I'm still contemplating the more I do the less I'm feeling that I understand but thank the Lord that's beautiful and it's it's wonderful the Lord said yeah it's not good we already addressed this aspect of uh, his creation not good for men to be alone I'll make for him a helper fit how fit are the Canadians today uh, any any statistics do you know anyhow about your country more or less I didn't have the mind and the time to investigate a little bit. Maybe a little better than Americans. Maybe. Okay, then <laughs> if Americans are about half. Yeah. Same way. Yeah. Canadian, same way. Uh, yeah, suppose that about 55, 60% of the people are fit enough not to divorce. Oh. But it's not sure. I don't know. It's interesting for you to make some calculations. I'll make a testimony. It's far easier. There was a time in my youth, being, being myself single, in which I decided that I'll never get married. Then after the decision, I was very happy. By the way, somebody said, I, I found the statement, somebody said, I never uh, I, uh, understand or find, never found happiness until I got married and then it was too late so <coughs> we are not dealing with that kind of marriage and because I was loving the Lord in my limits, within my limits and because I was enjoying working for the Lord, I was invited to a lot of weddings. I don't know how many hundreds of weddings I attended. Very nice. To see people, brilliant. To see the bride is shining. I was a photographer before working for the church. I know what I'm speaking here, and you know the same. That's obvious. Shining after some time. 
the minister would call, Radu, can you please come with me to make some counseling with that family? And I would do, I would go, you know, as a beginner Bible worker in the church, and I would see the same people, one in a corner of the room, and the other one in another corner, like this. You know? Where is the happiness? I have the photos. I did, I should have photos in the wedding. Where is that? Because as I'm not seeing the people after the wedding, yeah, I'm supposing that they're, they're happy, they're flying around. Where is that? And, okay, that's an exception. It's a bad exception. Maybe they are not taking care with themselves. <laughs> they have some spiritual problems. So now, okay, the Lord will help. Okay, that's an exception. Don't take it in black uh, colors. <laughs> Next, the same. Gathered the same. Then I made the resolution. I'll not get married. Why? Because I was supposing that I'm not different. I'll be very happy in the day of the wedding. Everybody will shoot photos for, for me. And then, what about the next six months or the next six years? I thank the Lord that somehow I trespass my resolution and I'm happy for that. That uh, I changed my mind. And that, uh, Romelia, my wife, is guilty for that change. Yeah, it's good. It's good that you cannot ask her about her life with me. Okay. It's, it says that, um, yeah, men should not be alone. It's not good to be alone. What is marriage? The, the Lord said it is the blessing when the divine principles are recognized and obeyed. In this relation, marriage is a blessing. It guards the purity and the happiness of the race. It provides for men social needs. It elevates the physical, the intellectual, and the moral nature. Fantastic. When? Not when you smile at the wedding. It's much more than that. It says, when the divine principles are understood and, by God's grace, are put in practice, are obeyed. And then we are getting stuck many times along our marriages. It's only by grace that we didn't divorce yet. Yeah? So we have, we have to be sincere with ourselves. What kind of religion do our children receive? Because they know us. Exactly who we are. Sometimes children are losing the track. And we cannot blame anybody, but we can investigate our own hearts. What kind of a religion are we sharing with our kids? Can they see us uh, with this, that spark in the, in the eye? Yeah, that heaven on earth. If yes, they are very, having very little chance to leave the Lord because they will think, okay, comparing with my friends' families, man, I like in heaven. Okay, why should I go with these hidden stupid people in the world if I'm having a, a, a heaven home? But what about if I don't? That's the challenge. It's never too late to start the new to reload other ball to, I don't know, the plan of God in our life. I'm trying hard to do that with my own life. And that's the promise of God. It says, what's the marriage? So the same question, some other possibilities. One of the most effective means to ruin, ru to ruin the usefulness of a young man or woman. Life becomes a burden, a curse, by the way. Is it a blessing or is it a curse? Let, let's define both of the statements. The same book, inspired by God. It's the Spirit of God saying, well, what is marriage? The, the perfect mean to destroy you, or the best blessing under the heaven, under the skies. Yeah? It depends 
how we relate ourselves with it. Let's read. No one can so effectually ruin a woman's happiness and usefulness and make life a heart sickening burden as her own specialist. <laughs> it's terrible. If you want to find a specialist to destroy your usefulness and your happiness, to put you to the ground, that's your husband. That's the best. You can find some others. Could be the boss in the work, but you can change the work. Could be the neighbor. You can change the yeah, the neighborhood, the country even. Could be the mother-in-law. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. You can take your husband and move another continent and then write nice uh, things on uh, Facebook to your mother-in-law. Oh, we love you so much. We're having only 23 kilometers, thousand kilometers. Uh, distance, so we love you so much. You, you, yeah, but when it's your own husband that you love and he claims that he loves you. Yeah. And now the second part of the paragraph. And no one can do 100 part as much. Oh, that means the wives are even more specialists. 100, 100 part as much as to chill the hopes and aspirations to paralyze his energies, to ruin his influence, as his own specialist, which is hundred times better than whatever other specialist to ruin him, to paralyze him, to destroy him. That's marriage. Guys, I, I mean the unmarried. Uh, are you still uh, thinking to marry? <laughs> okay. Think twice, please. Don't put your name on the same list. Don't put your name. You have to go back to the previous statement. When principles of God are understood and obeyed, then it's not only a blessing, it's heaven on earth. Sometimes, yeah, marriage, it says even worse, and because of the previous uh, slide, it's like a crowded bus. <coughs> yeah, the one in the station don't know how to get into to get up, and the next of the part of the state sentence, which is the one in the bus don't know what how to get up. And they simplify things. In Romania, you have to pay now if you are thinking to finish with your joy. About, in, in your Canadian dollars, about uh, $15. And you sign some papers to the notary, not to the judge. Just sign some papers. And that's it. They give you 30 days to think over, and then it's done. To make it simpler. If you want to get out, just make it simpler. Make it easier. Yeah. Brethren, this was this has nothing in common with our God. Nothing in common. That's another interesting uh, yeah, aspect. It says marriage in majority of cases it's the most galling yoke. There are thousands that are married but not matched thousands if you want to become an engineer how, how long are you studying i suppose after your your high school that's about 12 years yeah i don't know yeah more or less and then about four and then a master about one or two and then a doctorate about one or two yeah, if you want to become a doctor, it's even worse. It can take more, much more than that. And if you want to become a happy husband, how many years are you supposed to study? Me? Who wants to tell this? I already know. Please, don't touch my heart. I'm, I'm an adult. I know what I'm... Yeah, because... At least from your job, you can retire one day, but not from your marriage. 
Yeah. Why are we not devoting more time? Not to reach this, this uh, yeah, happy stage of things. Uh, galling, galling yoke, it's terrible work. Yeah? Or, or Christ honored the marriage relation by making it also a symbol of the union between him and his redeemed ones. That's totally different than the Gallic yoke. That's fantastic. Yeah. When the Lord was asking his disciples, are you not willing to go? What, what was Peter saying? To whom? To whom? That's the thing. That's the marriage between Christ and his church. And it's so huge, the reality of salvation, that God invented this possibility. You can understand the relationship between God and the creation of him by getting married. But not however married but getting happily married according with his principles. He himself is the bridegroom. The bride is the church of which, as his chosen one, he says, Thou art fair, my love, there is no spot in thee. By the way, are, are you in uh, Toronto <coughs> like this? No spot. Is this the real? I don't know because I'm coming only once in five years in Canada. I don't know. It looks like the Lord says about the church in Canada, you have no spot. <laughs> That's the heaven. If you husbands want to be the same happiness yeah, of the Lord in your life, to have the same, then say the same about your wife. You have no spot. You are the most beautiful under the sun. You're the perfect, yeah, righteous. And she will smile, she will know that's not the truth. And she will kiss you back because she will be happy to hear and to know that you are not mocking. You are true when you say like this. And that's heaven. Is this heaven or not? Is the Lord saying like this about us or not? Are we without spot in reality? Not at all, but by his love, he sees us like that. If in any problem, then he will assume the pain and he will pay. And then he will continue, no, you have no spot, I resolved it. I, yes, it's done, you have no, my darling, my dove, man. Fantastic, that's marriage, because that's, that's uh, uh, salvation. It says, the warmth of true friendship and the love the true love, yeah? That binds the hearts of husband and wife are a foretaste of heaven. Can we have a taste of heaven in this earth? More than if, uh, ever before in history, couples who submit wholeheartedly in marriage, both to God and one to another, stand at the threshold of paradise of pure bliss. I suggest to you to buy this book. It's still available in English, Mike Masson, The Miracle of Marriage. That's a Christian who wrote, after one year of his marriage, this sentence. If you, exactly what the, the Spirit of Prophecy says, 150 years before him, what? Heavenly principles. He said, Submit wholeheartedly to God and to one another. Then they are to the gates of the paradise. The problem we have is that there are two forces driving us in the same time in different directions. And therefore, it's complicated to deal happily with your marriage and with my marriage. And the two forces are the one the, the cry for dependence, for companionship, for togetherness. And B, surprisingly, the cry for independence, for privacy, for detachment, for freedom. Poor men, 
or woman. Yeah, how should we do now? For one side of your heart, you want to be together. You are hating to be alone. For the other, the other yeah, part of the thing, you are still wondering, is she still here? Every morning is insisting to be here. Yeah, when you go to work, sometimes your colleagues are not there. They are busy with some other stuff. You can avoid things. Even bad customers or clients, they are bad, you deal with them, you smile if it's difficult, but then they go. But in marriage it's not the same. Each one insists to continue there. And you want a kind of freedom. And in the meantime you want to be together. And that's impossible in the same time. Amazingly, the marriage, the true marriage of God is solving this paradox in a fantastic way. The Spirit of Prophecy is explaining the heart yearns for human love, but this love is not strong enough or pure enough or precious enough to supply the place of the love of Jesus. That's the solution. You want that love. You want to be loved. But uh, marriage cannot supply. It's only Jesus that can do it. Therefore, if we submit totally to Jesus, we are able to totally, completely submit to each other and be now the same person. Uh, although that we cry for love, it says in the Bible, let us alone, what do we have in common with thee? Yeah. In the heart, the two of them want Jesus in the mouth. They say, let us alone, go away. And it's complicated to deal with such a person. Which was the solution of Jesus. Cast out the evil. And then was only the heaven between the two and the heart of Jesus. It was a kind of symbol of, uh, how do we call it, a marriage. It was not a marriage. It's a spiritual speaking. I, I think that you, you understood the point. In a sense, they were coming close, were coming inside the heart of the Lord Jesus when, after the enemy was cast out with the pigs and so on. That's the point. Why so many tears in the families? Why so many unhappy days per year? Why so many... Okay, we are not divorcing. We are still loving each other, but it's not that paradise. It's not that heaven on earth. Is it? Or is not? Yeah, think. Yeah? The problem is that the love of God is very, very requiring. It's, it requires everything. It says, give me what? Your time, your, I don't know, money, your whatever. No. It's give me yourself. Just your heart. Not your mind at least. Everything. Subconscious. Everything. Give me. That's love. Everything. And if you don't, love will read in your eyes that you are not giving everything. And then you are mocking. No, my honey, I'm loving you. But shut up, please. Huh. Yeah? I can't help. Or you are, you are coming back home from your work. And I don't know how the wives, they have a fantastic perception. They know. And they are looking on, the, on your face and say, what's happening? What, what did you happen? No, I'm okay. Happy. Sit here and tell me. You cannot escape. That's love. It's good to be like that. You have to give everything or you are condemned to unhappiness. That's it. And that's about me, it's about everybody. And that's salvation. The Lord says, how much should we give him? Give everything and then you'll be happy. Go back home, sell everything. If something is in between me and you, sell. Yeah, put fire. Okay. And then we'll be together. The same in the family. Why? We rent. Because salvation is very alike with family and family with the salvation. 
I knew the statement read was like this. Christ made of the family, of the marriage, a symbol of what? Of his relationship. Therefore, yeah, the Lord said, all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, if you love me, then, yeah, that's, that's love. And this thing, it's fearful. How can I give it? What will he do with my love? If I'm giving him, to this guy, this is a stranger, right? I know him only one year and a half. How can I give my heart to him? <gasps> and what about if he's using Okay, do you use this verb? in this context, to be used. I don't know if it's correctly applied. Yeah? And what about if you use it? Use it. <coughs> I'm afraid. If you are afraid, don't marry. We say, I guess, John, for John chapter 5, in, in love, it's no fear. No fear. Therefore, you can give everything. If you cannot, that's not the proper person. Or you are not the proper person. That's the thing. If we are already married, that's even more complicated. Then we have to become the proper person. Give everything, whatever way be. At least you're not becoming a philosopher. You'll become a saint. That's the reason of marriage. Doesn't matter about the other one. If you are doing your part, giving all, by all, life to Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the rest is becoming with him. It's turning with him. He will take care of the other half of the picture. The question is, can we give everything? Can we be silent? If yes, we are the small minority to have heaven on earth. We will suffer sometimes exactly as God is suffering because of our sake. Because he gave, he gave everything. He's giving everything. And we put him to suffer. And we are the fiancé with him. We are supposed to get married on the wedding, yeah, on the glassy sea. And we are like we are. And he's insisting that we are having no spot. And he is in tears so many times per week. And if a person does the same, he's becoming like God. That's salvation. I want to do the same. Sometimes I'm finding myself very, very difficult to, to achieve that. It's only by God's grace. All the heart. I was traveling to a wedding with about, the, I don't know, six or seven young people in a van. They were supposed to sing in the wedding, and it was looking like we'll never arrive at the place. But fields and fields, Western Romania. Yeah, kilometers, tens of kilometers after Tesla. And we were somehow uncomfortable because we were supposed to be late in that, yeah. And then I said, look where love is bringing one, yeah. Because the bridegroom was our good friend and he was married in that day. Instantly, one of the young people answered that with this, with this thing. It's like, you know, we are never arriving, so on the other planet, this is we going to walk to perdition, he said. I'm asking now the congregation here, young people or not so young, do you agree with this thing? Look where love is bringing one person, and the answer to be to perdition. Is this correct or not? Hmm? Who supposes something? Say your, say your mind. It's not in the Bible, so you cannot be wrong. Just as your opinion. Okay? Is it correct or not? What did he mean? All the seven. No, it's up to you to interpret. Okay, please, brother. All depends on you. Okay. It all depends on you, because you said you were on the field, right? Lost. So the perdition, it was because of you. You were in there. You lost yourself. So that's the, the view that we need to... It's because of me. Because of me, I'm here, right? Uh, okay, that's good, interesting, interesting conversation. Okay, some other aspects, sister, please. Love never leads to perdition. Wow. Okay, thank you. Love never leads to perdition. So that should be totally wrong. I think there are many thinking like this. Thank you, brother. We can, we can try to explain it 
say where does be exercising every day leads to. So it leads to an effort at first, but you, you develop your body, and at the end you see how you're growing, how you're developing. So it takes an effort for learning another person, okay. you yourself, and you know where you're going. As long as as long as you have a vision. So if you're only thinking on the benchmark, then you will you will think that it sounds. Thank you. Sounds it of a kind of agreement, yeah. In a sense, if we look carefully, not to the perdition by the idea of destroying the person, but if you think on, on, the, on the ego, on the self aspect of a person, if love leads you, is not the self destroying Totally. Because you only think on the other person. You want to please the other person. You want to live for the other person. You want to bring all kinds of gifts, even moon or, or sun, if possible. All the stars of heaven. You even promise some things like that to them. So, is it or not? And what about me? I don't care. I'm so happy. That's only about the other one. Is it? Where is me? It's lost. It's... And it's good. In this sense, we put the cogs. Yeah, not to the whole thing, but only to the perdition. I'm getting rid of my stupid self. I'm only learning how to live for the benefit of the other one. And that's Christ, living only for our benefit. Is it or not? Is he or not? Like this, living for us. What about himself? When he's taking vacation, the Lord Jesus, he's standing day and night with the high elevated hands pleading in your behalf while you are sleeping because you are tired after your schooling of the, after your work and next day the same and next and the six thousand years that's jesus and that's marriage where is love bringing someone oh, to a wonderful fantastic reality losing or killing or crucifying self is this good or not can we say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Let us ask the Lord to bring us to what? To destroyment of self, which is selfish and is, uh, is bringing us to perdition. Then, because of this requirement of love, of love, all mankind, we are parting, we are separating ourselves into two groups. Some of us are afraid. Uh, yeah, there are those to, who fear to expose themselves and their vulnerabilities. No, I cannot give everything to my uh, marriage. I, I'll, I'll maintain something. Yeah, I'm afraid. What about if the other one is using me? Yeah, they are burnt out, not in the self, but in their personality. They'll never be happy. That's the problem. Can you get the point? Yeah. We can be happy only when we are like Jesus. And Jesus gave everything. Nothing. And just to make sure that there's nothing holding his hands, he opened the hands and put himself on the cross. And that's it. He, he died willingly. We know. Yeah? We agree. And therefore, to be happy, you have to be there. But with the risk that the other one would use you, well, yeah, you don't care. I love because I love. But look how she's or how he's doing with me back. Look what happened. No, I don't look. It's perfect, spotless. It's dear and lovely and so on. It's Sons of Solomon. It's like that. And by doing that, you are building a person. Because that's the love of God, building new persons. By his love, he's transforming us. We know and we are loving this reality in the New Testament. It says, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, because that love encompasses him, is a new creature. By that love, if we have the courage and the power of God of the Holy Spirit to give ourselves totally to the other one, then we experience the heart of the Lord Jesus. And he is taking care of all of you in the future. There are other smaller group, far smaller group, the minority, who are afraid 
but because of love, they stay, they don't run. Yeah? They stay to be burned, no problem. I'm happy to be burned by love, no problem. And then, they are burned too, but they are burned in their selfishness, not in their personality. We say that they become saints. I remember, yeah, stories about how people may interpret things because they love. That was about a, a scientist who was um, receiving a guest, and it looked like his wife was very unhappy with him in that day. And as he was never uh, responding back, she understood that he's never taking care about her heart and so on. And then because they were having guests, she started to make big scandal in the presence of the guest, which was quite rude, quite, quite bad. Okay, and at a specific moment, the guest stood up and wanted to leave because it, become, it became hot, the environment. The lady was really harsh on the man. The man was uh, like uh, not uh, really bothering himself about the context. He was yeah, taking care of his guest. And the, the, the wife, when they exit the, the door, because she was angry with his reaction, just put a basin of water in his head. Oh. And then the man cleared the, the water from his face and continued the sentence. Because he was speaking important things with his guest. To the gate, the guest was not there anymore. He, he was asking, I, sir, I have only one last question. Oh, come back, come back home. We can discuss, no problem. No, this is not here. Only one last question. Okay, which is the question? How can you bear? She said, what's that about, with, about what we spoke? No, it's about your family here. Sorry for missing my But I'm amazed. How can you bear like that? So what do you mean? No, I mean the water and the owls. It's, it's obvious. After so much rain, rain should come. <laughs> Everything has a logic explanation. I was so happy. He was enjoying his life. <laughs> I don't know if it's a true story or not. But if you love like Jesus, Sister White says in the name of the Lord, attribute only the best reasons to whatever happens in among the two. Why did he say like that? Why is he behaving? Maybe he's, uh, yeah, he's bothering his work. No, I, I know that he loves me. But, but now it's not so good for, for him to say like that. Let's attribute the best intentions. The same with the husband toward the wife. If we love like Jesus, because we are loved by Jesus, then we know how to interpret positively and uh, elevating our uh, details of life. These people are experimenting the highest happiness of heaven. In another, in another statement, our high calling, it says they can, they can, they cannot be but happy if the, uh, the fortune smiles for them or is uh, turning. Yes. Yeah, they cannot be my happy. That's it. And I, I would love to be that. It says uh, like that we can experience the heart of the Lord Jesus. Um, if we are willing, we'll reach to say, like in Songs of Solomon, my beloved is does not say it's another person. It's mine. I, in a sense, I own you. And that's dangerous. Sister White says, don't lose your, how's the word, your identity. Yeah? Our identity is in the Lord Jesus. So we, we never mix the two things. But as a human heart, we give as the Lord Jesus was giving himself.
completely, totally, not having any reserve. And that's the challenge. I am his. I am his. Can you take that risk? Now, we'll, we'll try to discuss with the young people later on. I don't know if they have questions or... I don't know. How is this sounding? If you are a Christian like this, you will be happy. But the question comes, to whom are you entrusting this availability of yours? That's the question. Yeah? You are prepared spiritually to give everything. Now should come the question, to whom? Is the other person deserving the respect and the, the, how say, the height of my uh, offer? Yeah? It's not like a contract. It's everything. And if, you, if it's like that, yeah, when you reach the condition, this condition, yeah, that the Lord desires you to reach, you will find heaven below and God in your life. It's straight like that. Or some other uh, similar um, uh, quotations of the Spirit of Prophecy. Now, in short, how is heaven? Because we are supposed to have heaven on earth. Let's think a little bit. How is heaven? Christ died for us. This is the picture of heaven. When you say heaven will be on earth, the meaning is this one. I will suffer to what degree? To the cross. It says suffer all things. Yeah, believe all things. So yeah, forgive all things. And then the last part of the sentence, what's remain? Suffer all things. And that's heaven. And therefore we are called to do the same. Love your wives exactly the same. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for them. Are we supposed to give ourselves or not? Or it is a strange gospel here. Then you have to avoid. Give yourself. May the Lord help me too because I'm speaking and I'm not telling you, I'm telling me as well. Give ourselves. That's fantastic. Or, how it's happened when something gets wrong in the family. It says, since all have sinned and we are justified by the grace as a gift through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. We are called okay. Why we are not okay? We are justified, why? Because he loves us and says, you have no spot. I paid everything. If your wife is mistaking something, how will be the reaction? No, nothing happened. That was my mistake. I didn't care take care of you in a way so that you didn't commit any. Yeah. And then they will quarrel half an hour. One saying, no, it's my mistake. The other one saying, no, but what's my mistake? No, but what's mine? It's a nice quarrel. That's heaven. Who is the guilty one? In the oriental part of Jerusalem, they put a cross. And Christ was raised to attract all the people to him. That's the guilty one. He took the sin, and therefore, his wife is perfect, spotless. That's heaven. I'll make a confession. I'm not like that. And I'm sorry for that. I want to do We are so selfish. I'll not speak anymore about myself. We were in a youth convention. 250 people on a hill, yeah, sitting on the grass in the afternoon, dealing about courtship and marriage and things like that. And we noticed some people. Uh, at the distance, sitting, yeah, aside. I want to speak with them. Finally, they were nice. They accepted the invitation. They joined the group. In these uh, few, yeah, matters that we, we were walking together, I understood that the man was a minister dealing with the youth. And then he was asking us, what are you dealing here? That's about courtship. I was not married at the time. And then I understood that he's uh, yeah, ministering about youth. And we gave him the word, if you want to say something for us here. And then 
Imagine, first time in his life, he saw 250 people sitting on the grass. And he said like this, after I got married, I made a fantastic discovery, which I never made before. I found out how terribly selfish I am. First statement he made publicly, we were shocked. Man, how can you speak like that to some strangers? But it's true. We are terribly, terribly selfish. But if we are becoming like Christ, we are assuming things. Everything that's wrong is because of me. Everything that's good is because of you. And the other one knows that's not the truth. And therefore, the other one will love you more and more. It's impossible to resist to this kind of love. Yeah. We are supposed to tell our spouses, thou art all fair, my love. There's no spot in thee. Or, heaven is forgiveness. It says, all our iniquities will cast you into the depths of the forgetting sea. Yeah? That's, that's, that's heaven. And then, for us, exactly the same. Forgive each other. Just as Christ, God, forgave you. That's heaven. Or, he will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Imagine, it's about God. So happy with you. What about ourselves? When we are judging, when we are unhappy, when we are yeah, commending, oh, 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 it's not good. Okay, but I forgive. It's not the way. It's not only forgiveness. To enjoy. It says, yeah, delighting himself. Yeah, on the other hand, on our side, we should be the same. Let her affection fill you at all times with delight. And it's a strange verb here. Be infatuated. Yeah, it's in revised uh, version. What? We're not supposed to be infatuated when we get married. But after you get married, it's okay. <laughs> be infatuated always with her, with his love. Fantastic. It's a choice. Why do you love? Because you love. Why do you feel like? Because you chose like that. The problem, people, young people especially, are sometimes missing their fantastic chance to happiness. It's because they misinterpret things. They are thinking, getting married will bring happiness to me. No. You are supposed to bring happiness to your marriage, not the other way around. Therefore, yeah, millions of people are unhappy, and some of them are just women. Okay. Instead of discovering where is the problem with themselves, they are blaming each other, and that was a disaster. I do know in Canada, but I, yeah, I know in our church, in many places, terribly unhappy people, if I'm not supposed to say more than that. Terribly unhappy. Why? Because we are so far away with the heart of the Lord Jesus. He's enjoying his fiancé and his bride, let's say. One day you'll be totally his bride. Yeah, he's putting all his heart. And he's never, uh, uh, how do you say, um, tired in uh, forgiving and loving. And it's, yeah. And one day, because by that love of him, we are transformed into his own image will enjoy uh, eternity with him. And that's the promise. Submission. It's a hard word, not in fashion in our days, but it's the core of the whole thing. Jesus said, I do always only what is pleasing my Father. I'm totally submitting myself. He said as well, not as I will, but as your will. That's, that's the will of the other one. The Father was with him. That's submission. And then he says, submit yourself to one another 
or wives submit yourself unto your husbands as to the Lord. With the parenthesis, if the husbands are like the Lord, the wives are supposed to submit. Happily, not slavery. How to say? Oh, where is my dignity? Where is no? It's indeed your dignity to be the queen and not to bother your heart and your mind with these things because you have the king. Okay, he has to do the thing, and the king says, "No, I'm your servant. I'm not the king." By the way, a Baptist home speaks about the wives as being the queen of the home. Is it or not? Did you find any statement about the husbands being the kings? I mean, we are supposed to be the servants, as Christ did manage to serve his. Yeah. They are the queens, we are the servants. Therefore, they are happy to submit to such guys. It's stupid for me to be the husband and to claim submission while I'm not submissive to my master. That's out of yeah Bible. But it's it's heaven and earth when our our wives will experience that abandoning in our yeah care. And then you'll be careful. What are you doing with the destiny of the family if she's so willingly uh, submitting herself? Then you will put questions, how would you like? Because I'm supposed to suggest the outcome, and you are so close to say yes, as, as you want, no problem. No. And then, out of that, it's so nice building together, the relationship. By the way, when did Jesus, the husband, take his wife from Egypt to Canaan or not? Did he promise to her? Yeah? The wife, the Israel people, to be taken from Egypt to Canaan. Yeah. How long it should take? Five weeks, more or less. How long did it take? How long? Forty years. Why? The wife insisted that she went the other way around. What did Jesus do? No, I'm the husband. I'm the, you know. No. Okay, my darling, if you want, I'll come along. He didn't say, no, okay, then you go. I'll wait here. Go 40 years, and when you're ready, then you come back and we'll continue. No. His love is like his love, not like our love. Come along, no problem. Complicate your life, even to death, no problem, if you love. And along the process, she will think, wow, was a wrong choice. I should have submitted. It would have been far easier to five, five weeks instead of 40 years. Why am I so stubborn? That's the submission of the wife. Can we agree, wives? Can we agree? <laughs> That's the submission. When you find out that he was right, because he was a man with the fear of God, and he loves you to the sky. And it's easy for a wife to be submissive if she is a daughter of God. And it's not easy for a man to lead out his, his family. It's complicated. But by the help of the Lord will be. Okay, submissive. That's a very nice thing. To be together. Submit one to another. Wonderful. And uh, yeah, toward the, the end of our meditation, let's think a little bit. The husband is to be as a savior in his family, ever seeking to uplift his wife and his children. <coughs> uplift. That's another bird you can see. Uplifted <laughs> by the big one. So just that's the marriage. If you want to put it in a, yeah, in a picture, that's the thing. Ever, it says ever, yeah, to uplift it ever seeking to uplift his family, to bringing them to the happiness of heaven, like a savior. We will breathe, will he breathe about him a pure, sweet atmosphere? Will he not as, as seriously cultivate the love of Jesus, making it 
uh, abiding principle in the home? That's the question for us. And that question is for the wives who don't have the time now to insist. Let's read this statement, which is applied to both. Love agencies have a wonderful power because they are divine. The soft answer that turns away wrath, the love that suffers long and is kind, the charity that uh, covers the multitude of sins. Will we learn the lesson with what power of healing would our lives be gifted? What? Healing? There are statements in, in a dentist's home speaking to hospitals. This is the best remedy or medicine or drug or whatever for your sick wife, ever sick wife, yeah? Is to love her, embrace her, put your life to death to her feet if you are the servant, if you are the man of the house. And she'll be happy. It's, it's strong affirmation. Now scientists are saying that more than 90% of the diseases are on, um, how do you call it? Uh, mental, uh, mental, uh, mental is how, somehow uh, based or, yeah, not that it's mentally ill, it's only, uh, I, I, I don't Mind. find the, yeah, the, the words, sorry. Psychosomatic. Yeah, psychosomatic, psychosomatic reasons, yeah, or mind. Uh, yeah, that's the, the, the thinking, the feelings, the, the all together. It's having a strong reflection in the in the stage of, and it's, it's, it's the, look uh, a power of healing the soul, healing the body, giving hope and smile and bliss in the home, and it says how life would be transformed and each become a very likeness or foretaste of heaven. This was our title. And just to make it sure that we don't understand um, how to say, catholically or hiddenly this, this uh, wonderful promise of God, the statement says, because God is love. He only can build this paradise in our homes. The presence of Christ alone can make man and woman happy. All the common waters of life, Christ can turn into the wine of heaven. The home then becomes as Eden of bliss. The family, a beautiful symbol of the family in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen? That's the thing. When Christ is the first and the last. And where are we? Nowhere. We are in Him, therefore we are in heaven. And our wives or our husbands are like, uh, like that. It's, it's like, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, taking this, this time to insist to follow these uh, few thoughts. Then we may uh, close our meditation with this last statement, among many others, stating like this, the sweetest type of heaven is a home, which home? It's one, in one phrase, all the Christianity, all the Christian uh, realization or salvation or whatever you may want to call it, all uh, heaven, in the, in the type of the sweetest type of heaven is the home where the Spirit of God is ruling the hearts and the minds. May the Lord bless us and our children to experience this wonderful reality. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Adi. Praise the Lord. Uh, brethren, I'm just thinking uh, this is a really stimulating sermon. And I'm thinking about something. If we all who have come here as families to this retreat, if we all bring little heaven to this place, how this place should be, uh, may the Lord help us to have heaven here on earth 
May the Lord bless you, each one of you, as we close the service with a hymn number 615 in our hymnals, which is the uh, hymn 615.
and for making it possible to the Lord, Lord Jesus in our lives. Help us, Father, to receive the Lord in these moments anew, to make Him the first and the last of our hearts, to receive with Him the forgiveness of all our sins and mistakes and trespasses of Your will in our life. We, are, we know, Father, that we are not as we were discussing here together. And we are ashamed for so badly uh, reflecting your plans in our daily life. But we thank thee, Father, for the hope you have given us. That through the, to the uh, Holy Spirit, through the power of thine, we can be transformed into our hearts in the newness of life so that we may reflect the Lord Jesus in everything that we do or think or uh, speak uh, in our life. Help us, Father, to have to experience this kind of heaven on earth in our own families. Help us to uh, sincerely repent for anything that was wrong with us and to uh, ask forgiveness of our spouses for anything that we, we did wrong against them. And help us, Father, to receive that forgiveness from them. And heal, heal our hearts and our homes so that we, we might represent correctly the heavenly kingdom here on earth. We thank thee, Father, that through your grace everything is more than possible. And that this is your design for us. And therefore we glorify your name without having any, any merits of ourselves, but in the merits of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.